Excellent. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for having me today, and I really appreciate being the closer for the third session. Not closer. We have one more. Well, for the third session. For the third session. Yeah. Right. That's right, because there is a fourth session, correct? All right. Um, we're ready? Uh, one sure. I hope everybody's been enjoying their time here. The Marriott, this is where we're, our local spot, really. It's great to have the New York Endovascular Conference here as well. So, oxygen therapies for the diabetic foot. This is a brief overview and introduction. This is going to be very, very quick, easy, and simple. Uh, I am an NYCPM graduate. I did one year at Wyckoff Heights, and then I finished another three years uh, at Mount Sinai with that wonderful gentleman as my residency director. Uh, board certified and all the good stuff that we all try to do. Um, my goal today is to review the basic science of hyperbaric oxygen therapy and transcutaneous oxygen therapy, reviewing these therapies in the, di uh, in the um, diabetic patient, um, give you some clinical information, and provide a window into the future of the oxygen therapies, and I have no disclosures. Um, diabetes in America, it's the leading cause of non-traumatic lower limb amputation in the United States. We know that there are 463 million people currently suffering around the world, and this figure, of course, is expected to rise. Um, we have tripled in diabetics from 1990 to 2010, so just think about another 15 years adding that on. And adults with diabetes have, an inf have a 50% increased risk of death. Around 75% of the ulcers may be preventable. Uh, we know what diabetes is pretty much. I think everybody here has enough uh, experience with that. Our two major types, one and two. Um, and we can skip that, right? One in three people over the age of 50 with diabetes is likely to develop PVD, all right? The risk of PVD increases with age, duration of diabetes, and the presence of peripheral neuropathy. 20% of the amputee patients will be deceased within a year after the PAD or diabetes-related minor lower extremity amputation. About 44% will be de uh, will be deceased in five years after a minor lower extremity amputation. So our amputation rates are giving these patients uh, a death sentence, as we all know. Survival rate following a major lower extremity amputation is only about 40% within five years, meaning the death rate's around 60%. All right, that's a that's a that's a crazy number, and we should try to do better if we can. Right, around 75% are preventable, as I said in the last slide. What's hyperbaric oxygen therapy? Um, it's a non-invasive procedure in which the patient's placed in a chamber containing 100% oxygen at pressures greater than one atmosphere absolute. Um, the pressures can go from 1.5 to 3 atmospheres uh, absolute, and they're typically you, uh, are typically utilized. Most hyperbaric treatments last about two hours. All right. We're commonly used for radiation tissue damage, crush injury, compartment syndromes, acute traumatic is ischemia, um, air or gas embolism, gas gangrene, decompression sickness, refractory osteomyelitis, severe anemia, necrotizing soft tissue infections, diabetic ulcers, non-healing wounds, thermal burns, retinal ar artery occlusion, carbon monoxide poisoning, skin grafts and flaps, and sudden, sudden sensor, sensorineural hearing loss. Um, as you could see, we've, we, we, we touch on a bunch of these subjects right here, all right? So this is, a, this is a, a therapy that we should be using. Henry's gas law, at a constant temperature, the amount of gas that will dissolve in a liquid is proportional to the partial pressure of the gas in contact with that liquid. Over here, this is an example of a secret um, uh, oxygen therapy chamber. These things cost probably around a quarter million dollars each. Um, as we know, our wound healing sequence uh, from fibroblastic activity to the collagen formation, you know, Im improved blood supply, advancing edge of, um, of the skin creates our wound healing. <coughs> God bless you. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy. All right. It decreases inflammation. It's shown to be as effective as dexamethasone, stimulates fibroblast collagen and osteoblastic proliferation and it mobilizes the stem and stimulates an increase of stem cells within damaged tissue and bone marrow. How many treatments does HBOT typically involve? Well, the treatments are individualized for each patient. 
Um, of course, there are some emergency cases where there's carbon monoxide poisoning where a patient will only require one or two treatments. Um, wound healing cases generally will take between 20 and 30 treatments to achieve the maximum benefit. They're administered once or twice a week for five days a week. So this is one of the reasons why compliance is a big factor. If you're um, you know, treating in a, in a hospital setting where, where you have HBOT available to you, this is, it, you get a much better level of compliance with your wounds. Here's just an example of some treatments. Um, great closures with hyperbaric oxygen therapy. You know, this is over a course of between 40 treatments for most of these patients. Uh, it's good medicine. It's cost effective for the individual patient. It's cost effective for the care for society. And it's cost effective for most hospital systems, especially if they have their own units. Contraindications in poor candidates, um, untreated pneumothorax, uncontrolled hypertension, diabetic with hyperglycemia greater than 300 milligrams per deciliter, um, and claustrophobia, asthma, and COPD. Cannot use hyperbaric oxygen therapy on them. Not hyperbaric oxygen therapy, okay? This is a local application, which we're gonna go into a little bit more. This is um, when you put a part of the body without completely closing the patient, it's not a hyperbaric oxygen therapy. And this is something that I think a lot of us have seen. Some of the disadvantages of uh, oxygen therapy, bloody nose, exhaustion, morning headaches, all right? Um, and some possible complications is lung damage, rupture of the middle ear, sinus damage, changes in vision, and oxygen poisoning. We can poison people with too much oxygen. Uh, this is a study from 2022 showing that um, there was about uh, 1,200 uh, uh, randomized clinical trials, right? Uh, the hyperbaric oxygen therapy increased the rate of uh, diabetic foot ulcers healing by 95%, and it um, reduced the incidence of major amputation by 95%. So here's a little evolution of oxygen therapy, all right? We could start from, this is gonna be uh, in, in uh, you know, side by side with how the telephone has, has, has evolved as well. All right, we've got the old hyperbaric oxygen therapy, like a big room filled, We've got the old payphone with the, uh, with, the, with the rotary dials, all right? And then we have a little bit uh, of, a, of, a, of a more enclosed uh, capsule there. Then we're, we're moving to our Seacrest um, chambers. We got the old fax over there. Now we're look, looking at some topical oxygen th therapy. And now we're looking at these small continuous diffuse uh, oxygen therapies, which can be worn on the patient and uh, the evolution to the cell phone. Transcutaneous oxygen therapy. You breathe continuously, perhaps your wound should too. The benefits of continuous diffusing oxygen therapy. It's cost effective, it reduces pain, which is really a big, a big part. If you have pa patients with painful wounds, you'll see how um, CDO really helps a lot. It's 24 seven, which is a real great benefit for us um, treating these patients that are quite non-compliant. Full wound healing, um, and it's naturally antibacterial. So we have a, a little comparison here of oxygen therapies. We've got uh, hyperbaric versus normal versus ischemic and compared to um, the CDO, right? And we could see that how um, continuous diffusing oxygen therapy is continuous at the level of 300 um, uh, millimeters per mercury through, through the whole entire week versus when we have a patient with hyperbaric oxygen therapy, that's every 24 hours you get that good spike of oxygen to the tissues. And with the continuous um, diffusing oxygen therapy, we have uh, a, a maintain a, a steady grade of oxygen to the wounds versus our ischemic and our normal wounds. CDO delivers oxygen 20 times longer than intermittent therapies. It doesn't take the weekends off. How oxygen works, this is pretty typical stuff, cell metabolism, energy production. The rate of wound closure, 460% increase, faster wound closure rate. Um, rapid pain relief, um, you could see that dramatically change within hours and days. Some patients um, with, uh, with arterial ulcers, is amazing. Wound perfusion angiogenesis, it's directly proportional. Antibacterial activities, respiratory births by the phagocytes will, um, decrease any of the, of, of the uh, internal bacteria. Uh, and we increase collagen synthesis and tensile strength of the wound. 
Um, oxygen penetrates the same way it diffuses as it, as it goes in the lungs. It's a relatively fast um, process. Once we, we expose the area to the oxygen, it is diffused from a low concentration to a higher concentration. So the effect of oxygen concentration. So it's always involved in enzymatic path pathways. The rate of reaction is proportion proportional to the oxygen concentration. So I want you to look on this chart over here and you'll see how the increase of oxygen um, will accelerate all the cell processes. So it actually speeds up all the things that we need um, in the enzymatic pathways to help these wounds clear up and to get that wound healing. Um, ischemic wounds are generally impaired, right? So we can see on the bottom of that how it decreases cell division decre and increases and the anaero anaerobic metabolism. Um, and once we apply that topical oxy oxygen, it r rapidly diffuses into the tissue and now it can support all the physiologic demand that we want. Uh, here's another published study from 2021, some of the molecular biomarkers of oxygen therapy with diabetic foot ulcers. It's going to show you all the different cytokine um, uh, production and how it increased everything. Um, indication for usage, all right? So here, here, here's, here's our, our bread and butter. Skin ulcerations from diabetes, venous stasis, post-surgical infections, gangrenous lesions, pressure ulcers. Infected residual lambs, skin grafts, burns, and frostbites. <clears throat> um, contraindicated with wounds with inadequate perfusion to support healing. Ulcers due to thrombophlebitis. Ulcers due to Raynaud's disease. Any vasospastic disorders, this will not work. Necrotic wounds covered by eschar or um, large blocks of, of necrotic tissue. Uh, wounds with fistula or deep sinus tracts with unknown depth. All right, so we want to clean out our wounds before we start using this therapy. Um, here's a uh, fully binded trial comparing uh, placebo to oxygen. Uh, so we use the oxygen system. This was uh, a pretty simple, this is that, that, that tiny little thing. It's about as, as, as indiscreet as a cell phone, all right? Uh, you could put it in the boot, you could put it on your arm, you know, it depends on where the wound is and stuff. Uh, put on your belt, sorry, not on your arm. Um, and with these things, it's pretty compliant, you know. Uh, they need to be charged. So this was a big study because this is um, the gold standard for CMS studies, all right. Uh, they took a whole bunch of um, patients with uh, and gave them the continuous diff diffuse oxygen therapy and uh, a bunch with just um, moist uh, wound therapy and a placebo. Uh, with um, a, no oxygen was flowing to the wound, all right? They all had foam dressings, occlusive layers, and an off-looting boot, all right? And um, this was designed for CMS, all right? They were concerned with the effects of wound size and the chronicity, um, and we agreed to um, analyze both, the, um, both of those during the course of the study. Um, so this is what they, they, they created this as the gold standard for studies going forward. And the placebo diabetic food summary, diabetic uh, foot wound ulcer summary was um, showed CDO closed the wounds better and faster about more than two times uh, compared to moist wound therapy. Um, and you can see that the larger and the more chronic wounds, the relative performance was increased, all right? Uh, it was also shown that um, CDO appears to reduce severe infections 75% less. Of course, health economics is a really important part of uh, how we practice our medicine. Um, and we were looking at the cost effectiveness of continuous diffusion of oxygen therapy for individuals with diabetic foot uh, wounds. And you could see here, moist wound therapy. So on the, on the left, you'll see the co average cost savings. Um, we've got the negative pressure wound therapy with the VAC and the hyperbaric oxygen therapy, which is probably the most costly. And CDO is significantly cheaper than all of these wound therapies. Um, shows some continuous uh, effects of the oxygen treatment, which is what I was alluding to before, the cytokines and the perfusion bacterial load and the healing. Um, and just look at these numbers, you know, uh, to, uh, the, the TGF, 80, 820%, 430%, 280%. 660%, I mean, protein production, cell growth, division, angiogenesis. I mean, it just, this is at one week, all right? These are, these are increased amounts 
compared to not treating, all right? So these are like uh, tumor necrosis factor. You're talking about hundreds of times more effective um, cell, cell and biological activity in the wound. Um, the wound perfusion was also significantly increased. Uh, in the three-week study time frame, 53% of the subjects had at least 50% wound reduction, okay? In three weeks, we can get 50% reduction in wound size. This is just uh, showing the specific cytokines and growth factors um, in each visit. And you could see how, how, how it increased um, between the, in, in those second and third weeks significantly. Um, Mark increase of exit in the first week, then reducing over time. Uh, expected physiological response from growth factors and cytokines were involved. All right, the effectiveness of CDO, adjunct to improved success rate of lower extremity, surgically closed wound. So it improved foot amputation. Uh, this was a pilot group study. It showed um, that the percentage of wound reduction at four weeks was significant. Um, you could see our f incident of foot amputation was significantly decreased. Uh, so with no 43% um, decrease of tissue necrosis with CDO therapy, uh, we had 75% uh, healing, successful healing with CDO therapy, and the wound uh, length reduction was 70% greater. It was greater. Um, let me see here. Sorry, I'm going to lose my foot. There's just a couple of case studies. Uh, and you can see this is a post-op, day 75. Non-healing wounds, post-surgical. Just a surgical wound. You see within um, three months, we get, we're getting complete closures. All right. Average wound days before CDO therapy is 299 and 65 days after, um, uh, after CDO therapy, wound closure rate of 76% success rate. Any questions? That's it.